I'm Jamie, your Arcane Brewer. I'm Jake, your Arcane Engineer. Uh, thank you to Mom Rock for the use of their song Conversation in the intro. We're into pumpkin spice season now, although really we've been in pumpkin spice season since about mid-August. But by mid-October, it's really in full swing, and people are putting pumpkin spice in everything. But pumpkin spice tends to go best when it's paired with flavors that have just a little bit of bitterness along with a fair amount of sweetness, like a chocolate, beer, or coffee. And I, I think coffee is probably the big one. Nothing gets pumpkin spice more than coffee. So today we're going to be making a mead that focuses on those flavors, pumpkin spice and coffee. We're gonna make a pumpkin spice methaglin, but we're also going to utilize the techniques from last episode, and we're gonna put it inside of a pumpkin. We're getting our pumpkin from a local farm in Johnston, Rhode Island. The place is crawling with family, so we keep the filming to a minimum. We ditch the crowd and slog through the mud to get out to the field where the pumpkins are. Of course, the pumpkins are already cut off from the stock, and the field is pretty picked through. There's really not much point in going to the field as opposed to just the tables that are right there when you enter. We don't have any specific requirements for this pumpkin, since we're only using it as a vessel. Jack-o'-lantern pumpkins aren't ideal for cooking or brewing. For that, you want sugar pie pumpkins, or buy the canned stuff. When making pumpkin beer in the past, I haven't noticed a difference in flavor between using fresh pumpkins and using Libby's canned pumpkin. Um, this guy's kind, kind of, of a triangle shape from the top down. I mean, that's pretty arcane. That is arcane. Sort of an acute triangle. It's a very cute triangle. Most importantly, this guy looks like he'd be less of a pain in the ass to haul all the way back. So let's pick this one. Now that we have our pumpkin, we check out with it. And it costs $20, which seems crazy since they're like seven bucks at Shaw's. But we haul it home anyway. All right, so we're gonna power wash this pumpkin. Not too strong, we don't wanna puncture the skin on the outside. But we do wanna prevent anything on the outside from being uh, pushed into the inside when we puncture it with a knife. When we go to scrape everything out, we're going to be exposing it to a lot of things anyway, but I don't know, every little bit helps. Then we cut off the top and remove the pulp and seeds. To help deal with the potential bacteria inside the pumpkin, we completely fill it with sanitizer. Generally, you aren't supposed to use sanitizer on porous surfaces, but people use it on fruit, so I figure this is fine. Once we're done shaking it up, we dump the sanitizer and bring it inside to add the spices. Pumpkin doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own. It's sweet and starchy, but otherwise pretty bland. Pumpkin spice is mostly cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of clove, and a little bit of ginger. We're only using cinnamon and clove to keep things simple. And also a little bit of coconut brown sugar. I tried this stuff when we made the king cake mead episode and I really liked it. But the focus was on cane sugar at the time, so I couldn't use it. I'm mostly using it here to caramelize and help the spices adhere to the sides of the pumpkin. With all the spices applied, we put the pumpkin down and start taking a blowtorch to it. I don't want to scorch it for too long, just enough that it looks like a medium toasted marshmallow. <laughs> it's 
So, our spigot's gonna go through the pumpkin. This is gonna screw onto the back here. Pumpkin will be in between the two pieces, get nice and tight. I'm gonna go on this ugly side because it's nice and flat. And I think probably about there. Yeah. All right, so we got some star sand mixed up here. We're gonna go over the opening a bit. Each of the bits, this area. Also my hands, you know, these gloves. Who knows, you know? But we've also got some food grade silicone sealant. You can see the specs that it meets down here. And uh, we're gonna fill this area up with some of this food safe silicone. That is probably way more than enough. Tighten it from the back until the front is flush. That looks pretty good to me. I guess we'll find out when we fill it. Comes with a gasket, but we're gonna make sure it goes in there. Come over the edge here so I can. We give the sealant on the spigot about a half hour to set, and then it's time to add the last of our spices. Coffee beans! We're using a cold brew blend by Little Roadie Coffee Company in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. They're right next to Foolproof Brewing Company. We'll be adding 12 ounces, which is about a cup. I'm going to pulse them for just a couple seconds in the food processor, but we're mostly adding them as whole beans. Then, we start pouring in our mead. This mead is a blend of a couple brews. A little over a half gallon will be my semi-sweet orange blossom mead with vanilla bean. I brewed this a few years ago, and I had the remainder of this jug left over after the jamboree. The rest of the pumpkin is filled with a traditional dry orange blossom mead, also fermented a few years ago by my sister-in-law Beckett. We learned earlier that our pumpkin can fit about 1.5 gallons of liquid. So this blend is going to be roughly 40% vanilla bean meat and 60% traditional dry meat. Now that our pumpkin is full, we add a hole to the top for an airlock. Right after doing that, we realized we don't need an airlock because we aren't fermenting. We just need a good enough seal along the top. It doesn't hurt anything to have it though. West. Then we apply the sealant along the seam of the pumpkin's top. Once the pumpkin is also sealed up, we put it on the shelf for one week. It's been It's been a week, so we're going to give this a try. See how it turned out. Let's take a little at first. Smelling a lot of coffee, as you would expect. I'm getting coffee and cinnamon. That is. All right. So we're gonna put this in bottles, but. First, I'm going to uh, rack it into this jug, uh, just because I'm not sure how many flecks of coffee might end up uh, coming through here. Um, I want to give it a chance to cold crash. So here we go. We're getting just a little bit of drip from the pumpkin.
So we didn't really need this airlock here, but uh, it's still a good idea since there's so much fermentable sugar inside the pumpkin itself and so many opportunities for infection. Luckily, we did not see any activity on the airlock, so hopefully everything's clean inside, but let's uh, open it up and double check. Looks good. Yeah. As we hoped, there's been no rot or mold growth. We're safe to bottle. All right, we're done bottling. So we have here our pumpkin spice latte methaglin. This swing top bottle is sort of the dregs of the batch, but um, I don't really want to open a full bottle because I'm expecting this to have a lot of caffeine in it from all that coffee. And I'm super light. Yeah. Little hazy, mm -hmm. but uh, you'd expect that from the uh, bottom of the barrel, so to speak. Yeah getting a lot of coffee and a little bit of cinnamon. <sighs> yeah. Mmm. That is good. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of pumpkin, but no, still quite good. I'm getting I can, the coffee. The coffee's definitely the strongest. I'm still getting the cinnamon. Um, but other than cinnamon, I wouldn't say there's anything really pumpkin-y about it. It's mostly coffee and a little cinnamon. But that's kind of to be expected, since um, a Jack Lantern pumpkin really doesn't have a lot of flavor to impart. And this was more of a pumpkin spice mead than a pumpkin mead. Yeah, this was... So, exactly. Yeah. Mm. It was pretty good. Yeah. I drink it. I did and I would and I will. Uh, thank you to Momrock for the use of their song Conversation uh, in our episodes. Appreciate it. Also, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps us out. We got up to 201 subscribers, so thank you to everyone who has uh, subscribed to our channel. We greatly appreciate it, and we're going to try to keep putting out content that uh, is worth seeing in your notifications. And uh, stay tuned for some big arcane news. Mm -hmm. Things are in the works. Um, I can have too much more, but maybe a little bit more. I'd say no. Yeah. See you guys next time. Yeah, from Queens.